156 years ago, one of the Wright brothers was born, as was Chris Watson, who'd go on to become Australia's third Prime Minister. Also, in a small country town just outside of Melbourne, the foundation stone for a new church was laid. The town, Diamond Creek. The church, St John's. Welcome, 156 years later, to St John's. I'm Andy, our Digital Minister. Today marks our anniversary, where we pause and give thanks to God for his faithfulness over the past year and cumulatively over our 156 year history as a church here in Diamond Creek. During our service today, I'd love to encourage you to share stories in the live chat or the comment section down below of your thankfulness to God. How has he blessed you or how has he seen you through tough times this year? Big or small, these stories go a long way to encouraging others as we all seek to know Jesus better. Hello, my name is Cameron Henderson and I'm a volunteer here at St. John's. Today's Bible reading will be from 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 8 to 36. Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known among the nations that he has done Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength, seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. O descendants of Israel, his servant, O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God, his judgments are all the earth, he remembers his covenant forever, the word he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac, he confirmed it to Jacob as a decree, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you I will give the land of Canaan as a portion of you will inherit. When they were but a few in number, few indeed, and strangers in it. They wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another. He allowed them, no man, to oppress them. For their sake he rebuked kings. Do not touch any anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods and nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him, strength and joy in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the, in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Then the trees of the forest will sing. They will sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Cry out, save us, O God, our Saviour. Gather us and deliver us from the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name, that we may glory in your praise. Praise be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy 156th birthday, St. John's. <laughs> My name is Maddie Bialecki, and I'm the Generations Minister at St. John's. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful that no matter how long you've called St. John's home, or if this is your first time visiting today, we as a family and community get to celebrate this awesome milestone birthday. We all know how much work and planning goes into a birthday party or celebration. Invitations have to go out. You need to make sure the guest of honour is good to go. The house or location needs to be decided on and then cleaned and tidied. The food you've chosen needs to be prepared. The decorations need a spot. Someone ends up putting together a playlist or deciding what music is right for the occasion. Heaps of effort and what is called fanfare goes into the process of putting together a birthday party or any celebration. Well, this year, as we celebrate our birthday at St John's, 
we're reading the story of a big celebration from the Old Testament. And if you read the verses that come just before our song of praise in 1 Chronicles 16, you'll see that there's some of the same aspects of their preparation going into their party that we have for our parties. In the Old Testament, before Jesus came to us, there were a lot of steps that needed to be taken before God's people could be in his presence. And King David has spent a long time in the chapters before this preparing the location and all these things for the guest of honor's arrival. In this celebration, the guest of honor is God himself as he is represented for ancient Israel by the Ark of the Covenant. There's also extra special people serving and waiting on, you could say, the needs of this event as God chose the Levites to serve him specially. There's important ceremonial offerings that need to be made in order to honour God and meet with God to make themselves ready for his arrival. There's special food prepared as gifts to the guests of the party in the bread, raisin cake and date cake. And there's even some bouncers or gatekeepers for this party. But the biggest aspect of this amazing celebration and event is the music. Most of the preparation for this song is having the people selected to play the beautiful music for their worship. You could say that in this narrative, the ideal worship service is being represented. And the theme of thanksgiving, the purpose of the musicians, the cake, the servants, the occasion itself is all for the guest of honour, Yahweh, the true and everlasting God. Here, they are celebrating with thanks and gifts and offerings how good Yahweh has been to them. All this preparation was to create a space for God's people to come and meet with and worship God, to come to him with their prayers and to receive his protection as they covenanted with him. The God of all creation has done amazing things for his people. And all the preparation and fanfare centers around this beautiful song of thanksgiving and praise that is designed to show God's people how to give thanks. So what are some of the things we can learn from this celebration for ours today? Well, this song of praise includes Psalms 105, 96 and 106, and it moves through different verses to arrive at the end with... Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. And there are three things that it focuses on that I believe are timeless truths about how we come to Thanksgiving today. First, we give thanks for what God has done. Second, we give thanks for who God is. And third, we give thanks as worshipful obedience in response to one and two. Well, our song starts with a call to worship, to give God praise and to sing, to proclaim, to tell others the wonders of what he has done for them throughout the many generations of Israelite history up to this point. They are called to look back at the many times God protected and saved his people Verse 12 says, remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. Not only has God saved Israel from slavery, but from verses 13 to 18, he has made them into a family, adopted them, chosen them as his own, made oaths to them and given them an inheritance. Verses 19 to 22 speak to his continued deliverance of his family from their many enemies, which, as we've read the Bible, becomes clear just how many times God has given his people victory against all odds. God has done many amazing things. And we give thanks for what he has done for his people and today for what he has done for St. John's. In the next section of verses 23 to 33, we see the song shift to the next Psalm, 96, that in many ways gives us in its first two verses the summary of the whole song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous deeds among all peoples. 
These verses are at the heart of our whole song today and show the reason for the worship, the reason for the remembrance and the celebration. We praise and give thanks because our God, Yahweh, is the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything in them. No other gods or idols or things we might love or desire are even worth comparing to him. Hear this language in verse 27 that describes who God is. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are his dwelling place. Glory, splendor, majesty, strength. This song is telling us to look upward, to behold the wonder of who God is. The God who creates by speaking, who saves by his mighty arm, has made himself known to us. But not only do we praise God, all of creation rejoices in verses 31 to 33. All of creation sings and dances and makes a big deal about who God is because creation can't help but praise this God for who he is. And even more so, us who sit here today on the 12th of November, 2023, having so, so, so many more examples of what God has done for his people. We have had Yahweh, this awesome God, revealed to us even more profoundly in the person of Jesus Christ, whose party is next month. It is who God is that motivates us to give praise, and he has revealed himself in what he has done. It's in the context of having seen what God has done and viewing who God is that the psalmist uses this term, a scribe which shifts the song to our response to God. Ascribe means give to the Lord, associate with God, represent and proclaim this is who God is and what he is due. Give honour, pay homage, give your attention and your allegiance to Yahweh. And we're left with a reminder not only of what God has done, but what he is doing and will do in verse 33 for he comes to judge the earth. Our song of praise ends in verses 34 to 36 with the first and last verses of Psalm 106. And it's in this ending we see the personal nature of our God and our relationship to Yahweh, that we are not only encouraged but commanded to cry out, much in the same way we are given the spirit to cry, Abba, Father. We worship as we come before him with our joys and sorrows, our cares and concerns in the present. We give thanks that he invites us to come, to call on his faithfulness and these amazing oaths and promises he has made to protect us, his people, now and in the future. And this future is that of his people singing songs like this song of praise. Our worship now is just a glimpse of the glory, splendour and celebration of the party we're going to have in the new creation. The God who laid the foundations of the earth that cannot be shaken, who laid the foundation stone of St John's Diamond Creek, has come to us, made himself known, saved us from sin and death, and is coming to judge the earth and make all right. And when he does, is when the story of God's people in perfection and freedom and perfect worship will continue forevermore. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Friends, our worship with all we are and have is our offering. It's our thanks and praise for all that God has done, all that he is, how he loves us and won us for Christ. The purpose of God's people is to come and worship, to sing, make music on these instruments for God's glory, his story, and in so doing, loudly proclaim to the nations and the people around us the goodness of our God. And today in our party to celebrate St. John's 156th birthday, we bring our offerings of thanks, our gifts of all kinds, including the appeal, and praise to the same God this song praises. 
our worship and obedience is to give thanks in response. We joyfully celebrate our birthday today, not to reminisce on how great we have been, what we have done, who we are, but all the great and many things God has done in his strength and majesty in and through his church. So give thanks and praise and offerings of worship to the unfathomable, incomparable, amazing, joyous God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whom we worship. Let's give thanks and praise now as our response and offering. Then all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. Praise be to God for who he is and what he's done. Praise be to God forever and ever. Amen. I hope you've had a chance today to share your stories of thankfulness. And if you still haven't, take some time now during our song to do so below. We're hearing a song today from Hamish and Katie Bland, I Thank God. Please feel free to use this as a moment of reflection before Dushi leads us in prayers. My name is Dishi and I will lead you in prayer today. Please join me in the prayer by responding 
Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. When I say God's love endures forever. We praise you Lord for you uniquely created each one of us and in you we live and move and have our being. We thank you Lord for sustaining us daily and providing for all of our needs. Thank you Lord for giving us gift of this day and providing us with a new opportunity to see the world and our circumstances in light of your mighty love, knowing that ultimately you are in control of everything. Jesus, when we sing praises and say the prayers, help our heart and mind to be fully committed to you. God loves and endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Our Father, we praise you for your faithfulness, goodness and grace as we reflect and celebrate St. John's 156th birthday. We thank you for welcoming us into God's family and giving us a sense of belonging. We ask that you continue to deepen our knowledge of you to carry out the church mission to know Jesus and make Jesus known. We pray that everyone who visits or watches St. John's services online to experience the hope and sense of belongingness into God's family. Jesus, bless the staff team with wisdom and strength to carry out their responsibilities. Lord, bless their efforts to bring many to faith and to bring glory to your name. God's love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Our Father, we are grateful for the peace and freedom in our country. We pray for leaders of our country and the leaders worldwide to work for peace and seek your guidance in decision making. We especially pray for the people of Israel, Gaza and the surrounding nations. We pray for leaders of these nations to have compassion to end the conflicts and bring peace between the nations and people. Lord, comfort, heal and strengthen everyone who is suffering. We pray for protection over all the people in war zones and ask God to respond to their cry for help. Be with everyone who is working to deliver humanitarian aids and pray that sufficient resources will be available to relieve the suffering of many. We pray that the world leaders will work together to bring reconciliation and peace between nations. God's love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Our Father, we are grateful for the covenant you made through Jesus to forgive us and give us new life simply by placing our trust in Jesus. We pray for everyone who is lonely, families that are separated, for those of us struggling physically or emotionally, those who are facing financial difficulties and the blind spots in our lives. Lord, strengthen our faith, heal us, deliver us from fears, and addictions and give us a peaceful mind. Give us the courage and strength to fulfill your purpose in our lives. God's love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Please accept our prayers, Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We will now say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from the evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thanks, Dushi, for your prayers. 
God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. In reflecting on the year that's been, I hope that you've had a chance to reflect and find evidence of God's faithfulness over this year. We praise God for who he is and what he's done. We praise in response to having a loving and generous God who gave us his son so that we could be in relationship with our creator. That brings us to the end of our service today, but let me stay, encourage you to stay connected during the week at stjohnsdc.org.au, on our email list and on our social media channel, channels on Facebook and Instagram. Today, we're also continuing our Thanksgiving appeal as we celebrate this 156th birthday of St. John's. I'd love to encourage you to prayerfully consider your capacity to give in thanks and gratitude to all that God has blessed you with this year. You'll find details on our website at the Info Hub on how to contribute. Last year, we raised $40,000 as part of this appeal, and we're hoping to match that again this year. So we close our service. Let me pray. Gracious God, we humbly thank you for all your gifts you freely bestowed on us, for life and health and safety, for freedom to work and leisure to rest, and for all that is beautiful in creation and human life. But above all, we thank you for our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for his death and resurrection, for the gift of your spirit, and for the hope of glory. Fill our hearts with all joy and peace in believing, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week. We'll see you again online soon.